I've crushed. The bottom of the hull. Well, I'm not sure, but I think it's possible. We didn't actually crack the hull. We definitely distorted it, flexed it. And uh, obviously, this bottom paint is not too happy. Right here, There's a line there. Uh, might be. Hard to say. Yeah. Mm, There's definitely flexing. I don't know what that means in terms of hull breach. But I'm just gonna have to chip all this off and uh, have a thorough investigation here. We had an incident in this hull when we were propping it up. It crushed a little bit, and we had thought that the hull was crushed, but it was just the bottom paint because it's like caked on there. So the area that flexed, well, first of all, this wall here is in line with the bulkhead under the hull there. It should be the blocking point. Just looking on the bottom where this thing is sitting, kind of looks like it's crushed up. And it's sitting kind of where this bulkhead is supposed to be. This whole thing here is pushed up here. It's going to believe that there is some distortion here on the bottom and maybe this big old crack really is damage. But yeah, clearly look, this moved over. You can see by the clear line and the, it feels like silicone actually, it's soft. Not happy about that. So I set the boat down on blocks here in the front. This is in line with the forward bulkhead and in the back. The locks are here, which is in line with the bulkhead that makes up the rear cabin wall. However, there might be a crack. I don't know. I'll figure that out when I move the boat and if I have to, I'll repair it. But I ended up looking inside and I made marks here. This is in line with the bulkhead that is absolutely there for the forward flotation chamber. And same on the other side. And then towards the back, this little mark here, which is in line with the bulkhead that I found that's immediately in front of where the water tanks would be underneath the bunks. So when I repaint the bottom, I'm going to paint everything I can except where the blocks currently are. And then I believe I'm going to move the blocks to these positions so that one, I can finish painting the bottom in the areas where the blocks currently are, but also so I have an opportunity to correct whatever damage I may have caused here. And the funny thing about this set of blocks underneath this bulkhead is this bulkhead I found when I dug into the floor does not extend all the way to the bottom. Not really a bulkhead, damn it. Okay, I'm almost ready to jack this thing up so I can reposition the blocks. So I've pre-positioned some of the blocking. I've got pieces there that'll get inserted. So really I'm gonna move everything from here to here underneath a bulkhead. I'm gonna do something similar in the back, move those blocks a bit aft. What do you think, babe? Does that look precarious or what? Oh yeah. <laughs> it definitely looks weird. Well, now that the boat is blocked up differently, I want to see if that area that looked like it was cracking down here, or at least distorted, is kind of back to shape. Let's just take a look. Oh yeah, look at that. This area here, this big crack, still popped up a little bit, but that was sticking way up. So it looks like the distortion less distorted again. So I think I'm gonna probably do is break out all this loose stuff from some sort of prior repair. I'm gonna chip all that out and I'll probably patch all along the inside here and remove this transducer. Let's see if I can get this off without the appropriate wrench. <clears throat> Turn it off. Little by little. Look at that. A little perseverance, a hammer. <laughs> and this should just push out at this point. Look at that. 
Aha. There's a big hole in the boat! Ah! All right. I gotta fish out the other end of this cable from the uh, chart plotter and then clean this up. Yep, that's it. fish this through the boat now. Cool. I'm going to clean that up. Okay, I'm about ready to grind this hole on the outside, so I'll try to keep some of the dust out of the interior of the boat for now. I just taped it with some blue tape. Again, let's just keep the fiberglass dust from coming up inside, because that stuff soaks. There's the bottom of my blue tape. Just confirming. Yeah, we got about a quarter inch here. So if we have a quarter inch thick, we want to grind out outside of this about 12 to 1. So we're going to grind it out about 3 inches out so we can feather the fiberglass. So I'm just going to draw 3 inches out and then I'll end up drawing a circle or something. <laughs> it should be a circle 3 inches from this edge. And if you remember, I didn't bother to strip this whole area very well because, well, it was very close to the blocks, and I knew I was going to end up doing something like this anyway. So, it'll get stripped plenty when I grind away a circle here. Look at that, left-handed. That's pretty good. Well, there's my cute little grindy circle. So I've seen it's written that it's uh, best before grinding fiberglass to clean everything with acetone. Basically so that you don't grind any imperfections of some sort uh, into the surface. I don't know. I've got all kinds of paint and all kinds of other stuff up there. So I imagine it'll get ground into the surface regardless. But uh, I'll go ahead and clean it up with acetone. Notice that the acetone is basically just eating what bottom paint is there. <laughs> but I'm a good sport. I'll give it a whirl. To do my grinding here, I'm using this Roto-Zip Rebel. It can be used as a spiral saw or all sorts of other things, but I'm using it with this uh, heavy sanding disc. We'll see. You don't want to get fiberglass dust all over you. It's really, really itchy. So I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt and uh, I'll probably tape this actually, but you want to get the cuffs to cover up your glove ends. So yeah, I think I'm going to use some tape. Yeah, nice. And I've obviously got a silly old t-shirt over my head with my face poking through and then I've got my baseball cap on backwards here just to kind of hold everything tight I'll put these goggles over my eyes obviously and the most important part is the mask because while you get fiberglass dust on your skin it might be really itchy and annoying you get it in your lungs it's gonna be annoying for life don't breathe fiberglass dust kids let's grind this fiberglass All right, I'm gonna call that done. Okay, down in the bilge. Time to take out everything that I put in place to block the dust. And uh, I'm about to create a little lot more dust. Uh, much like outside, first thing I'm gonna do here is clean it with some acetone. I've cleaned out the hole uh, as best I could around it with acetone. So much like on the outside, I'm now gonna try to grind this a couple inches outside the circle so that I can layer in fiberglass. On the inside of the boat, I'm going to temporarily put this piece of plastic here over the hole. And that's really just so that when I apply the patch to the outside, I'll end up having a backer, I guess, to push against. The plastic is so that the resin doesn't stick to the backer. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. I'm just taping that into position so it doesn't move too much. And because it's an imperfect shape down in that hole, I'm just taking this little towel that I had laying here. And uh, I'm going to place that over the hole. And then just put a little board here. Just a little piece of weight, if you will. 
When I drew these, I gave each of them a number, and I'm just cutting them out in order, alternating between mat and cloth, and then putting them in a stack over here. I'm going to actually create the base of the patch in place, and so I have 13 layers here. Maybe I'll do six of these circles as the initial base, and I'm going to create that right here on my plastic-covered surface here. I'm going to laminate them all together as a single patch, and then I'm going to carry it over slap it onto the bottom of the boat. I'll saturate this piece, put this piece on, saturate it, roll it, you know, yada yada yada, until I have the entire patch created. And I'll bring it over. And then these, right, smallest one last, so put that staged in a pile here, and I'll end up laminating those in place on the boat. Alright, gonna clean it up real quick with acetone one more time before we begin. Once I start mixing this, I need to work fairly quickly because, well, two reasons. One, West Marine only had the 205 fast hardener in stock. They didn't have the slow hardener, uh, which would have been more appropriate given the fact that it's fairly hot out here. It's about uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's at the upper end of what you would want to use the fast hardener with. But anyway, that gives me apparently about 9 to 12 minutes. <laughs> of uh, working time, pot life, and then basically, what's it say, about an hour fast cure? Yeah, about an hour of working time, but yeah, pot life is what we really have to be concerned with in this particular stage. It's a five to, to one mixture ratio. I have 206 milliliters here, so let's call it 200 milliliters, which if I do 50 mils of this, 250 milliliters of the resin, I don't know if that's going to be enough resin for my first patch or not enough, but uh, let's find out. Of course, cut this out. <laughs> All right, 250 mils of this resin. That would be a quarter liter. That's probably way too much, but whatever. Let's just see. It's probably way too much. That just looks like way too much for a silly little patch. All right, there's the resin. All right, 50 mils of hardener. Right. Got our hardener. I need to stir it for about a minute. That seems like way too much. This is going to generate a lot of heat. I probably should have done it in a shallow pan, but I didn't know how to do that and measure it at the same time. So, I guess I'll take my chances with this. Great. Piece one. I'm gonna wet it out. Yes, here. Not on the boat yet. Yeah, and it shouldn't stick to this plastic. If it does, we're in trouble. Not real trouble. We just have to start over again. Piece one. Piece two. Center it somewhat. This should absorb a lot more resin. And I'm gonna roll to get air bubbles out, but. I don't want to roll on the mat. I'd rather only roll across the cloth. So you'll see I'll I'll do my rolling on layer three. Yeah. Layer three. Put it on now. Uh, that see it's already absorbing because there's an excessive amount of resin on this. Which is fine by me. Alright. Roll in. And again, this is to get some of the excess resin out, also to remove air bubbles. You do not want air bubbles in your patch if you can help it. Let's be honest, you don't want air bubbles in your patch, period. All right, piece four, spread it out some more. Wait, I already feel the resin's getting a little warm in this cup. Not hot yet, but warm. And again, the cloth gives good bi-directional structure to your laminate, and the mat builds out some bulk. And it also gives good strength as well, really. I mean, it's all the little pieces are going every which way, every direction. So, 
One thing I haven't been paying attention to that maybe I should consider is sometimes people put the subsequent layer of cloth kind of on a 45 degree angle so that you end up with the cross hatches, you know, going all different directions. I haven't been paying any attention to that. Maybe I should, but I haven't. I think we'll be all right. Excess resin out of there. All right. And looks like this is our last piece. Before I go and start laying these things up in place on the boat. And actually, maybe I'll do one more piece just so I can roll this out with a layer of cloth. Since I'm thinking about it. Oh my friend. It's already pretty well soaking through here. Pull that out one last time. And when I put this on the boat, the widest patch, the, the widest circle. That goes up against the hull. That's what I'm doing. All right, Mr. Patch. I'll take this bad boy. I'll take my resin. All right. The patch is actually getting pretty warm, and there's heat coming out of the bucket. All right. A lot of heat. When it clicks, it kicks so fast. It's like immediate. All right. Let's slap this bad boy up here. Wow, wait. That's crazy. We've got these little flyaways here on the edges. I'm not going to be concerned about those. We'll just sand that off. All right. And I do have to put those extra layers on because I can already see that this is going a little bit flat in the middle. So it's good that I have those extra pieces that I can patch on here. It's impressive how quickly that kicks. No big deal though. It's good to know. Fast hardener hardens super fast. <laughs> Yeah, see, so this resin is a lot thinner, so it's not nearly as hot yet as the stuff in the pot. Again, maybe it makes more sense, maybe after measuring it, to pour it into something shallow so it doesn't heat up as fast. All right, first layer of the pot goes here. All right, good, good, good. I'm going to wet it. Oh, I don't really consider how hard this will be to wet this upside down. <laughs> I don't know. All right, I'm going to lay this next piece of patch down or up as the case may be all right now roll roll it in yeah that's nice roll that in. the air bubbles out that may be lurking beneath the surface let's help it saturate that piece with resin very nice all right Put a little bit more resin up there and next piece we go Resin on there, dripping all over the place. Who would have thunk it? That all wetted out there. Oh yeah, that's gonna kick soon. Feel it. Uh, normally don't roll these mats too much. Next piece of cloth. The way I measured these out, each piece is three eighths inches less in diameter than the previous piece. Look at that last one. All right. Will I have a chance to wet it before this resin kicks? I don't know. Looks like it. Looks like it. All right. Now, just to get it all in there. Laying down nice with your friends. It's still slipping, sliding around a little bit. That's all right. All right. We'll call that done for now. Probably want to clean that roller with acetone so I can reuse it. This hard as a rock now. <laughs> it's done. Look at that. Generates a lot of heat when you have it thick like that. It could set stuff on fire if you're not careful. Okay, I'd like to remove any potential amine blush from the inside here. So, pull up my tape and my plastic here. Nothing stuck to it, as intended. And yeah, that feels nice and hard, which is good. Let's spray that down with some soapy water really just this hole here that I need to potentially wipe because that's really the only area that there's exposed new fiberglass. And I don't see any amine blush to begin with, but better safe than sorry. I'm gonna do this little piece here that's poking through. Just a quick little sanding. It's already washed to remove the amine blush, but I'm just give it a little bit of sanding, rough it up. Everything else has been sanded with a grinder, so I don't have to sand all of this. Okay, one final wipe down with Acetone, probably be wearing a respirator because this stuff is pretty terrible, especially in confined spaces, but I'm stupid. All right. I'm going to 
going to mix up a fair amount. Uh, hopefully I can stretch the time a little bit. So, much like I did my very first pour for the outside patch, I'm going to go for 300 milliliters here. So, 250 of resin. Okay. I'm actually went slightly over, slightly over 50 of the hardener. Bring me up to 300 and a tad more, right? Okay. So I'm going to mix this up and uh, then I'm going to pour it into this white plastic bucket which is a much larger diameter which will spread the epoxy out over a greater area. Hopefully it'll be a little bit thinner and the thinking goes that it will kick later. And also, since I'll be working inside the boat, I don't want it to kick and get really hot and then I have to play hot potatoes trying to get this melting bucket out of the interior. So I have the whole thing and I carry it in this uh, metal pail so that if the plastic bucket melts, I'll be able to carry the metal pail out because I don't think that's going to melt. But I hope it doesn't melt. What's that overboard? <laughs> I'm going to apply this patch, the round part, probably what would be considered backwards, but I don't know, because it's on the inside, I think it makes some sense to do it this way. So I'm actually going to put in the smallest hatch first. I'm going to wet that down there. Grab my little baby here, pop it in there. Okay, one more epoxy, put it in there. I'm gonna go quick, right? Quick. I don't want any air bubbles. And uh, that's interesting because this is a really rough bottom surface, so I don't know if rolling it out is really gonna do me any good. Uh, I might just be better off relying on the brush to brush out any sort of air bubbles. But I gotta work quick because I don't want this to kick before I'm ready. It could be a little more sloppy working on the uh, inside here because nobody's gonna see it. It just needs to be well laminated and strong. So that's what we're going for. I'm rolling it a little extra here with the edge of the roller into the hole. Make sure there's no air down in there. This will be where I want to put that transducer when I have it shooting through the hull, right? Can't have any air bubbles if that's what you're doing. So, I'll see. You'll see. Lots of resin here. Oh man, let me smell it. That might be kicking already. It don't look like it yet. Alright. That's all I have in terms of circular patches. I do have some other little little patches here intended to go into some of these voids. I guess I can give it a whirl, see if I can get those in. Uh, this guy here, way up in the front, there's a void. From when I chipped out that weird excessive amount of resin that was poured into the hull, I left some voids, so I'm just basically filling them in a bit. That's even remotely necessary, but I'm doing it. It's starting to get kind of hot down here. I'm just painting these in. No need to try to roll them because the roller's not going to get in there anyway. Ooh, it's kicking. I can see it smoking off my brush. Yeah, it's kicking right here in the bucket. All right, well, this is the last piece we're going to get in with this batch. This little guy. I don't know if you can see it. It's smoking. Smoking good. Roll this a little bit while I can. Still able to manipulate it a bit. Yeah, that was a good idea to put those patches in there. Taking up that void nicely. All right. 